demonstration we're going to be using the uh, ACOM2 adapter to access the uh, Motorola microcontroller in a 1998 Toyota Camry V6 manufactured by Delco. Most of the, uh, the Toyota ECUs were manufactured by Denso and they have the uh, the 93C56 which is IC900 but every now and then you might encounter one of these and with the uh, number of locksmiths that I have talked to they will tell me that you never encounter these because they're so rare the next thing you know they're calling me back saying I have a Toyota Delco how do I do it okay so the purpose of this demonstration is to show you, one, how to use the ACOM2 adapter to communicate with the microcontroller, and two, when you get one of those Toyota Delcos that you're never supposed to find, you're never supposed to get, you'll know how to do it. Okay, so um, I'm not going to have you watch me struggle getting this thing out of its case. So let me uh, open it up. Uh, tell you what, before I do that, let me show you where you you can see if we zoom in here right there at the top here using a screwdriver to point it says Delco okay so that's how you know what you got and when you open this up you'll find that there is no 8 pin double EEPROM you've got to connect to the microcontroller so I'm going to open it up and show you how we do that Okay, so here it is out of partially out of its case. So we're just going to lift up the circuit assembly here and pull it out. Set the, uh, the other part of the case aside and we'll flip it around so you can see the part, which is right here. Okay, this is your microcontroller. And this is the part that you are going to uh, access and extract the information from the double EEPROM. So let's zoom in so you can see it more close. Okay, so here is about as close as I can get to the microcontroller. And it's hard for it's probably hard for you to see through the humidity sealant. But what we're looking for is, is what's called a mask number. And the mask number is the uh, actual photographic mask that was used to fabricate the part. And the mask number will cross-reference to the actual industry standard part number. And for a Motorola, this would be a 68 series, 68. Uh, I know this one is an HC11. Um, but I'm going to try and point to it with the pencil here so you can see it. Get close enough to see it. But the mass number is right here. It says C47M. A mass number is always a, uh, an alpha character followed by two numerics followed by an alpha. Okay, so the mass number for this particular part is C47M, but what is the industry standard part for the C47M? Okay, well, there's a couple of ways to find out. Let me show you uh, one way, which is off the paper document, which comes with the ACOM2. So hang on. All right, this is the physical mass number translation table that we provide with the, uh, the ACOM2. So you can see right here, is C47M, all right? So that's the mask number. And just to the right of it, it says 68HC711E9. All right, well, uh, 711, a 711 part of it says has a seven in the part number, it just means that it's an EEPROM-based memory part, uh, the, meaning the program is an EEPROM. Uh, the 68HC11 is the same part. So this would be a 68HC711E9 or a 68HC11E9. Um, let me show you the other way to uh, make that determination using our software. Okay, here we are uh, with the uh, computer with the computer screen. I'm going to start our software. And in order to get to uh, the librarian, which is where this uh, information is located. I'm going to pick just the serial web prom, which was not going to be the right part number, 93C56. If you watch our other videos, I'm not going to spend time going through exactly how all of these pieces fit together because you should already know it. All right, so I'm going to press P for path. 
I'm going to go to Locksmith, I'm going to press Enter, I'm going to go to the Librarian of Locksmith, and right here we have, if you look, the, let me find it, um, there it is, Mask to Part. Okay, and these are all the part numbers, or mask numbers, that translate to physical part numbers. Now, we've kind of made it easy for you. We're going to press Enter and go down into the View Mode and get the cursor, and we're going to go down and find our mask number. Okay, the mask number is right here, C47M, and we have 68HC711E9, so, as before, all we have to do to have the... Uh, Librarian, choose the correct part number from the mask number is press F6. So we're going to press F6 and it'll say device type updated. And now we're going to leave the librarian and go to back to the main command list. And you can see here that the device type is now 68HC711E9. Okay, well, that's great, but uh, what do I do now? Okay, well. The next thing that we're going to do is uh, I'm going to clean this part. So I'll show you, I guess I can show you how to do that. So let me pause this and we'll switch back over to the part. Okay, this is a conformal coating remover pen and it's really good for removing humidity sealant. Um, I've talked to uh, a number of uh, locksmiths and I say, how do you get the uh, conformal coating off of the part? And they'll say, well, I use, uh, I use alcohol. Okay, well, let me tell you what alcohol does. Alcohol will disinfect your part. It does not remove the conformal coating, so you'll have a really germ-free part, but it really isn't going to do much to enhance the connectivity to the pins to which you're trying to attach. Okay, so I like this particular uh, technique because the end of it is uh, a fibrous uh, material, and all you have to do is run it along the sides of the pins, and you can see conformal coating removal fluid is coming out the end, and this hopefully will do a good job of getting the uh, conformal coating or humidity sealant off of this part. Okay, and it's also attacking my uh, pad. Okay, so now that we have removed the conformal coating, um, the next step is to uh, attach the probes to the appropriate pins on the part. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, I'm going to go back to the computer and show you what we have on our website. Here we have the computer display and I'm going to minimize our software and go to our website. Okay, I've already actually got this set up so I don't have to wait for it to log in. And down here, if you look, down at the bottom, we have locksmith documentation. So we're going to click locksmith documentation. We're going to go over here to procedures. And that is going to bring up the automotive locksmith documentation page. And down at the bottom of the automotive locksmith documentation page are illustrations for the different immobilizers which you can access. So we're going to go down to Toyota. Toyota Delco, one at the very bottom. All right. So here we have required async adapter ACOM2, standard probe set, what's required to connect to it, and we have the Toyota Delco ECU zip. And what these are is a series of photos. So we're going to save it. We're going to go here and we're going to go to downloads and there is the Toyota Delco ECU compressed file. Apparently we have done this before because there are other files here. Anyway, we'll double click it and here are your photos. So I'll just show you quickly, give you uh, photos of the module. There's the, the uh, processor, but what we want to do is we want to hook up the probes. 
So we're going to go to photo number two here, which is attached probes. And there are where the probes go. Okay, so when you want to know where the probes go, the information is on our website. The picture is quite clear. It shows you exactly what colored probes go on the part. Now I'm going to attach the probes um, and then we'll proceed from there. Okay, so I'm going to pause it and attach the probe. Mm -hmm. All right, I have the, uh, the probes attached to the part. I want to point something out to you on this particular part, and that is that uh, pin one, which has the red probe attached to it, is marked with a little dimple. I don't know that you can see it clearly, but pin one is right here. It's a little dimple in the package, and the, and the pins count uh, right to left. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then uh, the green probe, uh, this would, uh, it's a 52 pin package, so it's uh, 13 pins on a side, so this would be 20, 19, 18, 17, it's the green probe, and then orange is on 20, brown is on 21, and gray is on 26. Okay, now that connection uh, illustration came from our website. So all you have to do is go to the website, find the picture. We have pictures of the different uh, microcontrollers and how to hook the probes up. But um, that is how it is uh, hooked up for this particular module. That's where I got it. You got to see how I got it off of the website and um, how the probes are, uh, are attached here. I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see uh, what this actually looks like. Okay, so there are the probes, a little, uh, a little uh, bit uh, of a view that's a little higher, a little further away. Um, and uh, now what I'm going to do, we're going to get the uh, programmer and we're going to attach the, uh, the probes to the ACOM2, which is installed in the programmer, and we'll see if we can't communicate with this part. Okay, so here's the ACOM2, ACOM2 installed in the programmer. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, let's confirm the dip switch setting on the ACOM2. So I'm going to switch back to the uh, computer display. And we're going to press S to confirm that we've got that right. Okay, we know that the uh, 3 and 5 are up there underneath the, the ACOM2. But on the uh, ACOM2 adapter itself, the illustration diagram shows that uh, switches 4 and 6 would be up. All right, so let's go back and make sure that that's, that's the case. Back to the overhead camera. And we're going to set switch 4 and switch 6 up. All right, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the probe plug and we're going to put it onto the transition board right here. And the brown wire is going to be on the right. And then we're going to insert the transition board into the ACOM2. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to establish communication. Let me make sure this is fully seated here. With the... Uh, the microcontroller. Okay, so in order to establish communication, first thing we're going to do is turn on the ACOM2, which is this switch right here. So we have the, the red uh, LED is now lit, which means we have power applied to the assembly. The assembly's over here on the, uh, on the right. You can't see it because I want you to be able to see what we're doing here. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, Established communication. So let's go back to the computer display. Okay, I closed the browser and it's going to make it a little bit easier for you to, to see since the screen isn't as cluttered. But now we're back at the, um, at the computer display and we're going to establish communication with the, uh, the microcontroller. And we do that using a, uh, a function of our software called device options. Okay, device options are executed with by pressing Z, and uh, the reason we have a, uh, a selection called device options is that if there's a device that has um, uh, another uh, mode or uh, something that you would like to, uh, to, to do which is not part of the normal reading and programming, such as um, a flash part, would you might want to erase the flash. Okay, well, the, the Z uh, option would have the erase flash procedure. Uh, accessible. Um, sometimes in a uh, an SPI part, you might want to go in and uh, uh, change the status register. That's done with the uh, the Z command. But in this case, the Z command is going to allow us to uh, 
upload uh, the communication program into the microcontroller. And what the communication program will do is just that. It's going to allow us to communicate with the double EEPROM in the microcontroller. Okay, so to uh, perform that operation, we're going to press Z. And there, when you press Z uh, in the uh, lower pane, you'll see the uh, options appear. Um, there are three. Uh, the second two, two and three, are not something that you would uh, be concerned with. They were used, uh, actually they were used by a university, because the university used this product, our product, in a lab. So they found those options useful. But in this case, we're going to use option one, which is upload 68HCXX communication program. So we're going to choose option one by pressing one and watch the right hand side of the screen. It'll say bootstrap upload in progress, followed by buffer upload complete, followed by communication verified. Okay. The communication verified in white, you must see. If you do not see communication verified, it is not communicating. Okay. If it doesn't work or there's some issue, the system will respond with communication failed. And let me show you what that would look like. Okay, let me pause this and I'm going to disconnect the probe. Okay, just disconnect the orange probe. Um, the orange and brown probes are the, uh, the transmit and receive lines uh, to the uh, microcontroller. So um, now when we press Z, it'll say choose option one. It'll say reset for processor not confirmed. Okay, that means there was no response. Buffer upload complete and communication failed. Okay, so we have established we have a problem. Connection problem, uh, processor problem, whatever. But the communication did not work, so you cannot access the part. It says communication failed. So I'm going to reattach the, uh, the orange probe. and we'll... Okay, the orange probe is reattached, so let's press Z and reestablish communication. Oops, Z, 1. Buffer upload complete, communication verified, and now we are ready to read the double EEPROM out of the part. So we'll do that in the manner that we have done in the past. We'll go to the buffer editor by pressing command 5, and we will press the get validated command, which is G, and the system will access the double EEPROM in the part. And there is the data, which is is in the, uh, the part. I think you might be able to see key information here, these values. Uh, E875, E8, or F87. I think these are key values, but I'm not sure. Um, it could be some over here as well. Anyway, so in order to do the clone out, we need to save this file. So we're going to save the file in our uh, clone out directory. So we're going to navigate to the clone out directory by using the path command. So we're going to press P for path. Uh, we're already on clone out. Okay, so uh, let's press enter to select clone out. Let's look and see what's in clone out. Okay, we have no file for the uh, Delco in there, so let's go back. We're going to use command A to save the file. And we'll just call it Delco. D -E -L -C -O dot bin. Press enter. Save defined range. Yes. File save complete. Now let's look in the directory and see if it's there. And yes, there's delco.bin. Okay, so at this point, you would navigate with your uh, transponder programmer software to the clone out directory and load this file and make your key and start the car and you would be done. All right, well, let's go ahead and use the, the librarian and not do a clone out. Let's do a refresh. Okay, the refresh is going to load the virgin file into the double EEPROM in the microcontroller. So we're already communicating with the microcontroller, so all we have to do is exit this. We're going to go to locksmith. We're going to press path. We're going to go over to the locksmith. We're going to press enter. We are going to go to the librarian. And if you look up here, you will see it says Delco. All right, now the way that this particular procedure will work is since the name Delco is also the name of the reflash file, which is delco.cde. You don't really have to do anything. All right, the librarian looks at the name of its entry, delco. It looks for a file called delco. It finds it. It brings it up on the status line and says, "Is this this file exists? If you want to program it, 
all you have to do is press F3. So in order to reflash, we're going to program Delco. So we're just going to press F3. It goes back to the uh, programming procedure. We're going to press P and allow the, the uh, system to uh, program the file into the EE prom, which is in the microcontroller. So it'll do that. It'll verify. Program complete. Data verification is correct. So this Delco ECU has been reflashed. So that's it. We've done a clone out. We've done a reflash. We have demonstrated how to use the, uh, the ACOM2 adapter, how to set the probes, where to get the picture for the probes. Uh, and that um, is pretty much everything that we wanted to, uh, to show you. And uh, as always, we hope you found this information uh, useful. And uh, as always, if you uh, liked this uh, content, pr please press the like button. And if you uh, like more content um, such as this, you can subscribe to our channel. And uh, as always, um, if you're considering a, uh, an EE prom tool such as uh, the one that we, uh, we manufacture, we would certainly appreciate your business. If you have any questions about our products, you can contact us. We would be happy to talk with you on the phone or answer an email if you would want to do that. So again, this uh, wraps up the uh, Delco uh, procedure video. Um, again, we uh, thank you for watching. And as always, information is available on our website, which is arlabs.com.